7.4 is the last approach to value. We told you there were three. And it's the most difficult, too. He's lying. He's being very untrue. I'm sorry. He's very, very untrue. This one is the easiest one because, quite honestly, it's the one you're never going to use. And it's the least accurate one of all the different ways to value property. Why is this one the one you're never going to use? Because when you look at this one, which is called the cost approach, the cost approach to value is used in estimating the value of anything that is not residential and not producing income. Now, I want you to just step back for a second and think about, that's pretty rare, isn't it? I mean, yeah. think about all the real estate you drive by every day. The vast, vast majority of it falls into one of those two categories. Either it's residential. It's either residential, the person who owns the land lives on the land. Everybody okay with that? Mm -hmm. Or it's income producing. The person who owns the land does what with it? Rents. Rents, Rents it. money off of it. Rents it out, makes money off of it. That covers probably 99% of all real estate. But there are properties that don't fall into either of those categories. And we call them special use properties. Anybody have on, a, like, on your brain, can you think of properties that would not fall into either the category of the owner lives on the land or the owner makes money with the land? Sure. School. D Damien said a park. Absolutely. I heard somebody say a school, school. library, a church. church, libraries, churches. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, somebody said foreclosure. That's not an example of it, because here's the thing. Somebody's going to live there. What's the purpose of the person who's being foreclosed on and the purpose of the next person who buys it to do what? Live there. To so live there. there. Right. You're being too literal with that. But that, as far as the use of the property. But we're talking about properties that their normal intended use is not to be resided in and not to make money. Uh, Nisha said, this is mostly going to be public places. Yes. And nonprofits, mm -hmm. public places and not, I mean, could a hospital fall into the category of a special use property? Yes. It could. Yeah. If it's what kind of a hospital? Sure. Nonprofit. If it's a nonprofit hospital, there are nonprofit hospitals out there, folks. They don't make money. And so what's the value of that land that that hospital sits on, including the building attached to it? We don't know because we need another method. We can't value it based, because here's the thing. If you go back to that hospital and we valued it using the income capitalization approach, what would his value be? They don't have income. Well, what would the value be? Zero. 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 Does anybody believe that's an actual value of that land? Let me give you a, let me give you a perfect example. The University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill, near and dear to my heart. How much money does it make? Mm -hmm. Tons. Zero. Zero. It's public. I mean, yeah. It's a public institution of higher learning. It doesn't make any money. It's nonprofit. The now there might be Chapel Hill. UNC Chapel Hill makes no money. Makes no money. Taxpayer funded. Okay. Now, if it makes no money. How about the thousand acres that that campus sits on in the middle of one of the most expensive towns in all of the southeastern United States? Does that, does that land all have zero value? No. 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 It must because if it has a zero NOI, but that's because the income capitalization approach is the wrong tool for that property. Does that make sense for everybody? Right. right. Yep. Well, then why not do the they sales comparison? Why not do the sales comparison floor. approach? Why not do the sales comparison approach? So we're not living there. It's non -residential. Well, we're not living there, but think about what, look, there you go, Brady. Think about it. What's the, what's the, what's the heart of the sales comparison approach? I need what? Comparable properties. Folks, I can assure you beyond a shadow of a doubt, there is no comparison to the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. It doesn't exist. No, I'm kidding. But, here, but here, realistically, there is no comp. When was the last time a university sold? What are you going to compare it to? It doesn't right. exist. 1777. <laughs> it doesn't exist. And so when you don't have comps, you can't use a sales comparison approach. When you don't have NOI, you can't use the income capitalization approach. These are the properties that fall through the cracks. Mm -hmm. Is everybody okay with that statement? Mm -hmm. 
This is the land that we have no other way to value. This is the last resort. This is super inaccurate, but it's better than the property being labeled with what value? Zero. Zero, because that's what it would be labeled using the other approaches. I've had somebody say, the cost approach is so damn inaccurate. I'm like, yes, it is terrible except it's better than every other possible method for that property. Sometimes bad is all you got, right? And I mean, here's the thing. If I'm starving, a rice cake is a terrible option. But if it is the only option, I'm eating it. You know? Well, yep. I'm eating it. We'll take it. I mean, and that's the sales flavored that, ones. And that is the cost approach. The cost approach is literally the only chance left to value these properties. And because of that, it's really more for insurance purposes than anything else. Because we need a way to, ins if you go to an insurance company and say, I want to get insurance on this and it has zero value, well, guess what kind of policy they're going to give you? Zero. 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 <laughs> right. right. So we need a way to come up with an estimate of value for no other reason just to get insurance on these properties. And so well, and because this one is like a really oddball one, I think this definition here is the one that sets it apart. It's the only one that deals with depreciation. The it's the only one, one that we tried to estimate how much the structures have depreciated. And I'll tell you why. Because it's the only one that we're going to look at what the structures would cost to replace. To rebuild. To rebuild. Think of this as like, think about anything for insurance purposes. When you insure something, isn't depreciation going to be a major part of that process? When you insure something. Think about your car insurance. Mm hmm if you wreck your car, do they write you a check for what you paid for it new, or do they look at the depreciated value? Depreci yeah. Depreciated value. Depreciated. depreciated value. For because here's the, here's the truth. If they wrote you a check for what you paid for it new, everybody would go out and run their car into a tree on purpose. <laughs> well, I don't know about all that. If we insured these buildings in that way, everybody would light their own building on fire on purpose. That, that I agree with. Yeah. So the insurance companies are not going to insure these properties based on what it would cost to replace them brand new right now. That's just right. going to become a starting point. What do we have to do with that value of what we think it would cost to replace it? Take it and do what with it? Bring it down. Depreciate it. We have to bring it down. We have to depreciate it. And depreciation is going to be based on a couple of factors. Number one, the condition of the property. Number two, the age of the property. Does that make sense for everybody? Condition and age are going to have a dramatic impact on depreciation. Depreciation and the kind of depreciation that we use is called straight line. Add this to your notes. And I need to add this to the slide, but I'll let you add it to your notes. This is called straight line depreciation. Here's why we call it straight line depreciation. We are assuming that the value of the property starts at 100% on day one. No and problem. over time, we'll do what? Go to zero. Go down. Go straight down until it gets to what? Zero. 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 That's, that's what straight line depreciation means. Here's what I want to point out to you, though. Such an important thing to remember. What's not depreciating about that property? What's the most important thing on that property? The land. The land. 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 land does not depreciate. So are we saying that special use properties, the whole property will depreciate to zero? Or are we simply saying that the buildings on the property will depreciate to zero? The buildings. The, buildings. the structures. That's exactly right. The buildings so, or structures will depreciate to zero. Somebody asked me, um, what did he say? The only one we try to figure out the depreciation value on and it would be when we're using the cost approach the cost the approach don't fit into the other two because in every other approach to value whether it's the sales comparison approach or the income approach we're trying to predict what a buyer would pay the buyers have already factored in depreciation and appreciation when they make their offers does that make sense for everybody yeah. this one we have to factor it in because guess what's never going to happen with a special use property it's never going to be what it's never going to be sold. We're not trying to predict what a buyer would pay for the University of North Carolina because no buyer's ever going to what? Buy it. Buy it. We're trying to predict an insurance value, and that's why we need to factor in depreciation because there's not buyers to do it for us. And so when you hear depreciation, you're always talking about what approach to value.
cost approach. The cost approach. Everybody okay with that statement? Mm -hmm. okay. Now, on the test, and I think, Janet, did you say you were not okay with that statement? No, no, I can't. Why do we need to? Are we ever going to need to do this for an insurance company? Is that why? We no, it? you will never use this in the real world. You okay. as a real estate broker will never use this in the real world. You just need to understand it exists for these types of properties. Because the truth is you probably ne will never broker a deal with one of these special use properties. But right. maybe you will. You know, maybe you will. And if you do, you'll know how to, how to value them. But... When it comes to depreciation, there's actually three different types of depreciation. There's three different labels that we can put on uh, depreciation. The first one is called physical deterioration. Okay, Physical deterioration means the structure itself is breaking down. Th things are broken. Things need to be repaired. Thing so this is a maintenance issue. Everybody okay with that? Physical de deterioration is maintenance issue. And maintenance issues can be very minor or super severe. It needs to be painted. That's an example of what? Physical, Physical deterioration. deterioration. The foundation is crumbling is also an example of what? Physical deterioration. Physical deterioration. Anything that deals with the physical structure itself breaking down is called physical deterioration. That is very different than a process called obsolescence. Now, obsolescence is still a type of depreciation. It still lowers the value of something. Let's take it away from buildings for just a second. Let's go to cars. Or phones like Androids. They're so Oh, awesome. let's go to phones. There you go. Obsolescence. <laughs> Obsolescence. It's a great way to think of it. Phones. I'm glad you brought that up. Phones is a great way to look at it. Obsolescence. Might you have a Motorola StarTac somewhere in a drawer somewhere at your house? No. Yes. Yes. But, <laughs> I guess. And if you turn it on, might it still work? Might it still, if you went and like got it activated, might you still be able to use it in some limited capacity now? What do you think? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Could throw it across the rim. So it has not physically <laughs> deteriorated, right? They never broke, right? It has not yeah. physically deteriorated, but has the value of it depreciated? Has it dropped in value anyway? Yeah. Yes. yes. Because it is functionally obsolete. It functions, but that function is now what? Absolutely. Obsolete. No longer desired. Yeah. Could we have that in a structure as well? Could a building have things about it that still work as they were designed to work, but are now obsolete based on preferences of purchasers today? Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Absolutely. I Jerry mean, wood cabinets. Well, right. It could be anything it's from personal preference. It, 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 it could be preference related. It could be function related. It could be anything like shag carpet. Shag carpet would be a good example of a functional obsolescence. Nobody wants to rake the carpet anymore. It still blows my mind that people used to have a rake for their carpet. I think it's coming back. Do you know how gross <laughs> that is? It's like outdated. Like, so, I just don't like carpet in general. So functionally obsolescent means the same thing. And I heard somebody say it. I think it might have been Christina, but I'm not sure. Uh, it, it's the same thing as something simply being what? Outdated. 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 Something about the structure that's outdated. The building is an office building that was built in 1932 and does not have air conditioning. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not physically deteriorated. I didn't say the air conditioning was broken because it's not. Right. It was built without it. Is that desirable now to have an office building with no air conditioning? No, that's just an yeah. insult. No, that <laughs> is obsolete. And it is functionally obsolete. Does that make sense for everybody when I say it that way? Right. So the, the, the absence of something doesn't make it a deterioration. That's exactly right. A five-bedroom five house with one bathroom. How many of you think that might be functionally obsolete by today's standards? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely it might be. Functionally obsolete. 
And so when you look at functionally obsolete, that is a type of depreciation. It causes the property to lose value because it simply means things that were built into this structure are no longer desired by current potential owners. Are we all on that page? Are we, is everybody good with that? Mm-hmm. There is another type of undesirability that can lower the value of a property. But this one is not on the property itself. Nothing to do with the ba- the building, nothing to do with the land, nothing to do with even the property itself, but things surrounding the property. What can you think of that might be nearby a property that would make a buyer pay less for that property, even though it's not on the property? Chicken farm. State. And chicken farm. <laughs> chicken farm, airport. Hog farm, train track, landfill, power lines, power lines, all all of that stuff. I mean, like the factory nearby smells, but yes, the paper mill is next door. Would that make a, those of you that are familiar with a paper mill, would that make a difference? Yes. I'm going to tell you what, I'd rather smell anything than a paper mill when it cranks up. Yes. Janet, see, we're just going to have to agree to disagree on the strip club. I think that adds value. It, I don't think that is. <laughs> it could be good. It could be bad. You know, like. Yes, yes. Yeah. It can definitely be good. <laughs> uh, uh, but no, but you, you see what I'm talking about, right, though? A economic obsolescence is something that the property owner cannot change. Here's the thing about physical deterioration and functional obsolescence. Can the property owner, these two kind of go together. Because the property owner can fix these if they want to, right? These are fixable. Mm-hmm. It might be expensive to fix, but they can do what with them? Fix them. They can fix them. They can fix them. Even a functional obsolescence. That building built in 1932 with no air conditioning. What can you do? Fix it. You can put air in it. Mm-hmm. You can put air in there. That five bath- five bedroom, one bathroom house. What can you do? More Another bathroom. Even if you have to eliminate a bedroom to do it, you can yeah. get a four bedroom, two bath house, which would be much less functionally obsolete. Mm-hmm. Economic obsolescence is what we call incurable. Mm. Why is economic obsolescence, you think, considered incurable? I can't control what other people do with their land. Mm. Yeah. I cannot force my neighbors to stop operating the pulp mill. Seth and his friend David cannot force the hog farm down the road from the wedding venue to stop having hog slaughters during the wedding receptions. Okay, I was like, who is David? But then I got it. <laughs> no, you know you know exactly who David is. Your your best friend from television. Ew. David. <laughs> Ew, David. <laughs> Uh, Seth loves that show. <laughs> oh, yes. They are all such good actors. But think about it. Isn't that an example of an economic obsolescence? Because they were all about the wedding venue. You remember that episode? Mm-hmm. Everybody remember that episode? Mm-hmm. They're all about the wedding venue. Until what? The pigs are being murdered. Until they heard the hogs being slaughtered down the road. Yeah. And it's like, mm-mm. No. Mm-hmm. The value mm-hmm. just plummeted. That is an example, a great example of an economic obsolescence. And so all those things you mentioned are economic obsolescence. I really do think that's where the test questions come in on the cost approach to value, the different types of depreciation. As far as the approach, it's pretty simple. Because the land does not depreciate, we're going to come up with a separate value for the land as if it's vacant. You're not going to have to do a math question with this. You just need to know. Land, vacant. Whatever we predict the land would sell for vacant, that's where we start. We add what we think it would cost to replace the structure, but then we immediately do what with that replacement cost for the structure? Subtract. Yeah. Subtract what? <clears throat> depreciation. 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 Because the, 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 the value of the structure is not the same as when it was first put there because it has depreciated over time. So any of the depreciation would come out of the structure's value, and then you've got the total value of the land. Mm-hmm. That, folks, is the cost approach, and that is it for valuation as a topic. Look at that. All done. Right. Valuation.